So could an alternative option like this be a viable option? Did I just say option twice? Hey, what's up everyone, Danny here. In this video, we're gonna check out a graphics card from a brand that I've never heard of until just recently. Have you ever heard of a company called Yestin? Uh, if you have heard of them before watching this video, let me know in the comments below. I'm curious how many people have. Uh, this is a three gigabyte GTX 1060 from them. It doesn't look like any other 1060 you might have seen, right? Uh, at least not in the US anyways. Uh, if anything, I'd say this looks like one of those fake sketchy GPUs that plague eBay. You know, the one where they bios flash it to show up as something more capable than it actually is. The GPU market as of making this video in quarter 1 2018 is in a horrible state right now due to cryptocurrency. Everything is just way hyped up and overpriced. So could an alternative brand like this be a viable option for you? Or should you just pass on it altogether? Let's find out. I came across the Essen brand when a company called Banggood reached out to me to do a review on one of their products. Now, I've heard of Banggood in the past, but I never really gave them much thought. I just knew that they were one of those international online retailers that sells almost everything, kind of like Amazon, except based in China. In terms of legitimacy, I'll be honest and say that at first I thought they were a bit sketch just based on their name alone, uh, but after doing a bit of research, I found that there were large reputable groups that have vouched for them, uh, such as the Mechanical Keyboard subreddit and RC Drone groups, and I found out recently that one of my best friends, Man Karate, who does the music for the channel, uh, he's really into drones and has bought from them with no issues, so they checked out. Browsing around Banggood, I found that they actually had computer hardware, not just peripherals like mice and keyboards, because we all know that the Chinese markets are already flooded with that stuff, but actual hardware like GPUs, RAM, and cases, motherboards. So my interest was piqued. Now, they don't carry big name brands like Asus, MSI, Gigabyte, EVJ, or other names that are more familiar in the US. They carry brands I've never heard of. So I saw the graphics card, saw that it was from Yestin, and then started digging around for information on them. Starting with YouTube, the only videos floating around were foreign ones from random people that did not really show much more than unboxing of the GPUs, so I didn't find those too helpful. There's also a bunch of videos where they're just pictures panning and zooming and stuff on still images, uh, which also didn't give me any confidence in the card either. How could a legit company like this have no coverage on any of their cards? So then I switched to Google, where I found better results. I was able to find information from sites like Guru3D and Tech Power Up, some with articles that date back 7 to 8 years. Then there's the Yesin website where you can actually see the history of all the cards that they've manufactured and it turns out that they've been making cards for a while, the earliest ones dating back to the NVIDIA 600 and the AMD HD 5000 series. So after seeing all that, I was pretty convinced that they were legit. So with all my concerns in check and accounted for, uh, I told Banggood that I'd love to check one out and test it. It came in a plastic mailer bag, which isn't surprising as everything I've ever ordered from China comes in one. They probably don't do boxes like Amazon Newegg does because it's just way more expensive to ship that overseas. It was wrapped in a couple layers of foam sheets for protection, which should be fine assuming that it wasn't punted by the delivery service at any point during the transit over here. The box is completely covered in Chinese writing, but I was able to get some translations for it. All the text was basically the same stuff that other GPU and motherboard boxes usually have on them, boasting its features, how it's made of quality materials and has exceptional performance and good cooling, you know, that kind of stuff. Inside the box itself, there's the card wrapped in a bubble bag, a brochure in a foreign language, and Molex power adapters. For specs, it's the same as the Founders Edition 1060. There's no factory overclock on it, but there is room to do so if you wish, and you'll see that in a bit. In terms of looks, the card is very bland. The design looks pretty dated for being such a modern graphics card, but that's probably because by now I'm so used to seeing multicolored shrouds. The designs on the fan stickers also don't help it either. It's a dual fan design with pretty standard dimensions, it's not too notably long or wide, so it should fit in most cases as long as it's not some super compact mini ITX case, and there's no backplate, just bare PCB. It's powered by an 8-pin connector. So up to this point, everything seems pretty standard, right? But is the card legit, and is it the real deal? Well, yeah, it was. Everything checked out when it came to GPU-Z, and testing it out against few benchmarks, I did confirm that it was indeed a 3GB GTX 1060, and not some BIOS flash fraud that I was worried about. So the card's legitimate, but coming from an unknown name like this, I wanted to stress test it. So what I did was, I found an overclock that I considered stable, which was an additional 200MHz on the core and memory. Then, every single day for one month straight, I ran the PC for a few hours at max load, well beyond how actual games would stress it. This comprised of running the Furmark stress test concurrently with various Unigen benchmarks. My goal of doing this was to keep the card fully loaded to see if any of the components would give out during the test period. Now I do understand that a month is not a significant amount of time compared to a typical graphics card's lifespan, which could be, you know, anywhere from like 4 to 5 years or even beyond that. Uh, I just can't realistically test it for that long and then report back to you on the durability because not only would the card be obsolete by then, but it'd also be like the year 2022. 
Uh, but what we can do though is take a look under the cooler and see the quality of materials that they use for it as that would be a pretty strong indicator of what we can expect out of this card. Now I'm not going to get into some gamer's nexus level of PCB analysis here as that's well beyond the scope of this video as well as my own credentials but I did take a brief look and dug around for a bit for my own learning. The video memory are from SK Hynix, the capacitors are solid FP caps which is now owned by Nichicon, one of the upper tier Japanese manufacturers of capacitors, and the MOSFETs are from Magnachip. I can't comment too much at this level though since this is still relatively new to me and I've definitely got a lot to learn, but I'll include a link in the description with high resolution pictures that I took for those that are well versed in PCB design and electrical components in case you want to take a look. So now let's compare the Yeston 1060 to what I saw in the dual fan Gigabyte Windforce 1060 that I used in a build a few months ago. Their stock clocks were a bit different, the Gigabyte comes higher clocked out of the factory, but when it came to stable overclocks, both cards peaked at essentially the same level. When it comes to cooling performance, the Yeston was no better or worse than the Gigabyte. Both cards overclocked with the default fan curve for topping out in the mid-70s during long gaming sessions. Do keep in mind that the Yeston was tested in my personal system, which has a front timber glass panel that isn't the best for cooling performance, so your mileage may vary for the better if you have a full front mesh case. In regards to noise, the Yeston was virtually inaudible alongside the case fans, AIO pump, and power supply in my system. Here's a sound sample at full load while gaming. Looking at the side-by-side -side performance, their benchmark scores were almost identical, basically within a percent or two of each other, which I'll write off to margin of error. Do note that the CPUs paired with each of the cards were different since I don't have the other system on hand anymore and that the driver versions were not identical, but both of these things should be pretty negligible as the synthetic benchmarks I chose aren't too affected by them. You can see here that I tested the 1060 with a low-end G4400 which is a 2-core, two 2-thread two CPU and the results weren't phased at all so the difference between a Ryzen 1400 and i7 6700K shouldn't have mattered too much. And to address the differences between the driver versions, the GTX 1060 has been out for well over a year and a half so the drivers by now have for the most part stabilized, so any differences between the two were mostly due to game ready releases or other minor features. So at the end of the day, the Yeston card performs as any other 1060 would from a bigger well known brand. At the time of making this video, the cheapest 3GB 1060 I could find on Newegg and Amazon was $360, and the Yeston was $300. That price is still too high compared to MSRP, but ridiculous prices due to mining aside, let's assume that this 20% gap is there no matter what the price is. What are your thoughts on this? Would you consider an alternative, lesser known brand if it came at that much of a discount? And if not, how much would the price difference need to be for you to consider it at all? Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that Yeston is overseas, so if you're in the US like I am, you'd have to deal with international shipping and long wait times if there was ever like a warranty issue and you had to send it in. Uh, I can see this being targeted for people outside the US though because at the moment this card is competitive with US prices and from what I've seen in the comments from my other videos is that uh, international prices are usually a lot higher than the US so this could be an alternative for you depending on your country. I just find it super interesting that there's this whole market of cards unknown to myself as well as most likely unknown to a lot of uh, US consumers so I'll definitely be keeping an eye out on their future releases because based on their track record uh, it's likely that they're going to be releasing the NVIDIA 11 series as well as the AMD RX 600 series so I'm curious to see is uh, once the whole cryptocurrency price hikes you know that dies down uh, what the prices will be like compared to the US how competitive it'll be uh, but only time will tell. Um, but yeah, if you guys found this video uh, helpful or enjoyable or informative or interesting at all, uh, please be sure to hit that like button and if you're new to the channel, uh, please consider subscribing. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this card, would you consider it, would you buy it, would you just straight up pass on it after watching this video and seeing how it performed. Uh, and I want to thank you all for watching as always, thank you for supporting the channel, and I will see you in the comments as well as in the next video. Bye.